Hello everyone, my name is Wale Farang. I'm a tech entrepreneur and you are watching Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On today's show, we'll be reviewing three new exciting stories as always. Our first news is that Nigerians can once again register new SIM cards, but at what cost? Also, let's watch out for Tech Roundup with me, which is right after the first story. I will start with the first one, which is our anchor story talking about uh, SIM card registration. Uh, a statement was released uh, last week said to Nigerians that uh, they can once again register their SIM card with their biometrics in line with the revised National Digital Identity Policy for SIM card registration. Uh, the policy includes guidelines on new SIM acquisition, activation, replacement, among other. One rule that stood out is that Nigerians can now only acquire new and registered new SIM card at telco companies. Uh, for us, this is a story we've been tracking for a few weeks, uh, and the reason is quite obvious. Uh, for several, several months, uh, the federal government and the NCC have said that there wasn't going to be any new SIM card registration in the country, and that has frustrated a lot of people for obvious reasons. Uh, people lose their SIM card registration. I mean, people lose their SIM card. They can't register new ones. Uh, people acquire new phones. They can't register SIM card to use with it. Foreigners come into the country. They can't register new SIM card to use. Uh, businesses rely on SIM card for operations. I run a payment company. And part of what we do with our devices is to put registered SIM card in them so that they, we can process transactions. All these activities stopped for several, several months. In fact, there was a revelation recently about an estimate of about 10 billion naira being lost on a monthly basis by the telcos because of this pause to SIM card registration. Uh, but that, that's now new. I mean, that's, that has now changed. Uh, the government has now revised that regulation and then, you know, uh, SIM cards can now be registered, even though there are now sort of new rules attached to it. And what, what we really want to evaluate, you know, are the, are the following. Uh, you know, this, this new, um, you know, new rule uh, now permitting SIM card registration, what does it really mean for all the other activities that before now, uh, all you know, sort of connect together to make this seamless. Uh, one of the one of the uh, the new rules that stand out is that SIM card registration now has to be done at the telco location. Uh, this was an activity that was an activity that was decentralized before. Uh, you could go to uh, you know a telco agent and they will be able to do some of these activities for you. What is the implication of even you know? income generation for you know of the, of you know from that activities from those agents that's something that we, we we need to talk about there's now um id verification you know why is that so important as you know are there examples of you know things that have happened in the past on the negative side that we've been able to um you use people's same identity uh you know, verified to be able to connect them and trace them to those activities, making this really, really important and an imp you know something that everybody wants because it's going to save all of us. Uh, you know, Eddie. Um, I uh, thank you very much, Wally, for for articulating this um, story. It's a very important uh, um, um, issue that you know, and I'm I'm happy you are you're addressing this. Um, I come from a slightly different view. Um, uh, you know, comparing why is the, is the government doing this? Uh, you know, what could be the motivation for uh, still centralizing power, as it were, within you know these big Tesco's that are already uh, so big? But what I what what I could say is there are examples of very successful uh, we call them big too big to fail businesses that you you know you give power to 
to, to these businesses to be able to control um, and to be able to regulate, to ensure efficiency. Uh, and we have examples. Um, if you go to South Korea, you, you'd see companies like Samsung, you see companies like Hawaii, Hyundai, and these are big corporations that are, you know, super uh, big. They're useful for the economy. They're, they're good to, to centralize and, and keep efficiency, you know, in check. Uh, and, and again, if you, if you look at, you know, the US or other, or that, you see, you know, this kind of activities going on. But if you look at Nigeria, I, I can understand with the government, you know, uh, you know, having to to ensure that you know the telcos are, are the only ones carrying out the registration. But there's a big risk um, because, of course, as you've mentioned, Wally, we we lose businesses, we lose small businesses, they lose money. There's no competition, and the problem for Nigeria is if they fail, if these telcos. Uh, unfortunately, if they have to fail or, or you know, if, if something happens, you know, then that, that's a big, big uh, impact on, on Nigerians and data being a big issue now globally. Uh, we have a very huge problem on our hands. Yeah, you both, you both have spoken really well um, on behalf of both uh, all these stakeholders involved in this particular story. Um, the lift of the ban was very, very welcome. It is something that we've been pushing for a while. Even on the show, we talked about it, that we didn't see um, what point there was um, for them dragging out the registration for so long or the requirement to register nine. Um, the requirement to register the NIN for so long. Um, we had the BVN, we had other forms of identification. Why was that so important? But, you know, like I said, it is a welcomed, um, it is a welcomed progression in the whole story. However, I just wanted to speak on behalf. I mean, yes, I am with, it is, it is not good news for small businesses and roadside sellers. I'm all for that. But at the same time, I, I kind of understand where the government is coming from in terms of the security that they're trying to protect. Like the thing is that over the last few years, um, too many people have been, been able to commit so much fraud because they could easily have access to SIM cards or the use of, of phone numbers without much um, hustle or much huddle. So this 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 particular requirement or this particular um, 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 request in their, in their policy would ensure that, or at least would somewhat limit the rate at which people, you know, misuse um, phone numbers and misuse SIM cards and all of that. Um, and then I, I feel like um, you say, they, how would they feel? In the end, before now, let's think about it. When people had lost SIMs or when they had to retrieve SIM cards and all that, they still had to walk into mobile telco operators um, offices to be able to get these things back. They couldn't go to the roadside and out to the, the person who was just selling or registering on the site to be able to retrieve their lines. So in the end, they still had to walk into these companies to be able to get their SIM cards back. So I feel like they're already, the, the importance of them being the central body that attends to all of these issues was already in place before this policy came, in, came, came to be. Now we'll take a short break for highlights from this week in tech. This is Tech Roundup Weekly. Enjoy. That's all we can take this week. As always, we love to hear your comments and feedback. So please connect with me on LinkedIn and on Twitter at Wally Farrell. And please remember to subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Have a great week, guys. And until next week, good night. <laughs>